Hello, good good evening everyone. So in this particular video, I am going to discuss Z-test for hypothesis testing. That is exactly the idea. So if you look into this particular problem, I am just explaining the problem here. A candidate claims that his typing speed is 120 words per minute. 100 tests of, tests of the candidate has been taken for 1 minute each. So we have to make a decision whether this particular candidate has to be recruited or not. On the basis of uh, the sample output which we have generated here, so our null hypothesis goes mu is greater than or equal to 120 words per minute. That means if uh, my null hypothesis is accepted, that means the sample uh, and uh, the claim of the candidate doesn't have a significant difference, and the sample suggests that uh, he is typing more than 120 words per minute on an average, and. Uh, alternate hypothesis is uh, that the mu is less than 120 so if i look into uh, the hypothesis then it is pretty clear that if my null hypothesis is accepted then i'm going to uh, make the recruitment and if it is rejected then i will not go for the recruitment and since the sample is pretty large 100 tests of one minute each are been taken so in that case i can confidently use the z test and uh, Though I don't know the population standard deviation, but with a such large sample, I can, uh, you know, uh, calculate the sample standard deviation and then you can see that uh, the, for a very large sample, the difference between population standard deviation and sample standard deviation is not uh, very much significant. So there are three assumptions behind Z-test. One, the data is supposed to be normally distributed, which I am assuming. Either data is normally distributed or sampling means are normally distributed. Second, the sample is large. When I say large, that means above 30, which is 100 in this particular case. And the population standard deviation is known or assumed. So in this case, I am assuming population standard deviation. You can say that because the sample is large. And I am assuming that sample standard deviation will be close enough to the population standard deviation. So uh, these are the test score and these are the test numbers here. So if you look into this particular problem, there are in total 100 tests which have been taken and uh, of one minute each and these are the words the particular aspirant has typed of one minute so it seems pretty difficult but it's not more than one and a half hour exercise so uh, first i calculate standard deviation of the sample by using a simple formula stdev and i'll use the formula which was in 2007 uh, take the test scores and that's the standard deviation right here so I got 14.81, then I use average of this column right here and the average comes out to 166.33. So this is sample mean and uh, standard deviation which I calculated, then I have population mean with me, 120. So uh, this information I have generated uh, just to understand that uh, the candidate was claiming 120 words but actual sample is suggesting that uh, he is typing 116 words per minute on a test score of 116. So I'm going to use a z-test to check whether the claim is true or not or whether the sample output is significantly different from population output and uh, null hypothesis can be rejected or accepted. So uh, I'll go to data ribbon and there into data analysis and the analysis group there is a tab called data analysis. And in this, I will see that there is no uh, direct formula for uh, uh, calculating a z-score for single mean. So the first formula, I get it z-test for two samples of mean. But here I have only a single series. That means only one particular series. So uh, we have to trick Excel a little bit. So what I would do is, I'll take my sample mean 116.33 and I'll create a, a I would say a dummy uh, you know data set dummy series here and uh, that is of course going to be 116.33 uh, the average of the sample and I throw it down and I'll just take the same format in this also and that looks fine now to me. So I have created a dummy column with the sample mean here. Now I can use the function which is exactly here. Data analysis. And I'll go to Z to sample means. I click OK. It asks for variable of 
range 1, variable range 2, hypothesis, hypothesis mean difference, and variable of 1 known, variable 2 known, variance, sorry, these are two variances. So, I'll just uh, read things a little bit. I already know the standard deviation. So, either I can calculate variance direct for this particular series, right here for test scores. And uh, I, I just leave one question, what is going to be variance here? It is definitely going to be then uh, to answer it, the variance in this particular series is going to be zero because standard deviation is going to be zero. And if you wish to check it once, then I can show it up because uh, all these values are same. So standard deviation of uh, uh, this second series is going to be zero. So I'll use a standard deviation dummy and uh, Yes, it is nearly equal to zero. I'll just change this particular set to number. So it is zero, right? So variance also is going to be zero. So uh, uh, that's the set. The platform is ready. Let's apply a Z test. I'll go to data, data analysis, Z test for two, variable range one is my test score, variable range two is my dummy which I have created here and I hypothesize mean difference is 0 which I am going to take 0 and uh, variance of 1 which is known 219 219.402 and uh, I, it is not going to take a 0 variance so I will give it a pretty small number and labels I have my headings in first uh, row, so I will keep labels. I'll, I want to paste my output on this cell, it's, uh, this sheet itself. So I'll select my output range, let's say here, and I click OK. And the table pops up immediately. Let's analyze the table. So I have all the descriptives and I have my z scores. Since I'm doing a single mean z test, so I'll be just looking into a one tail value of z so i'll just highlight it so i'll be bothered about this particular value right here uh, about fundamentally these two values z critical one tail and p value of z and this is a calculated z so these three values i'll just uh, end up my discussion here by mentioning certain points so i'll put my hypothesis here so uh, I can uh, check null hypothesis or two different ways. One thing I can do is I can calculate this z. So this is z calculated actually. Z calculated. So either I compare this z calculated, z calculated, with my z critical one day, or I compare this p value, which I just put in a little different color with my alpha value which was uh, the level of significance which was 5% in this particular case. So right now the first approach is I just uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you about Z calculated. So if you look into Z calculated if it is above Z critical one tail then I uh, reject my null hypothesis. If it is not above then I do not reject. So if you look into the, uh, this particular value on one tail it is less than uh, 1.644 so I do not reject minor hypothesis. So managerial decision here is do not reject null hypothesis. So this is the decision which we are going to take. Why? Because G calculate is, is less than Z critical. Right? If it is more than that, then I reject it. Same way I can compare my uh, P value which is P uh, with my alpha value. Alpha value is the level of significance which is 0 0.05. So if I compare this particular value, it, the, the case in case of uh, comparison of P value is absolutely opposite when I compared Z calculated with Z critical. If we look into the P value, if it is above alpha value, I do not reject. If it is less than alpha value, then I reject. So if I look into 0.499, it is above my level of significance alpha, which is 0 0.05 in this case. So again, p value is communicating the same thing that do not reject null hypothesis. So you can use one of the approaches. You can use z calculated with z critical. 
you can compare this particular thing or you can you compare your p value with respect to your alpha value but both the cases both things are going to give you the same result so do not reject the null hypothesis and uh, the candidate shall be recruited now if i just want to conclude it in one more go then i wish to say that uh, in a statistically the sample output or sample mean which was 116.33 words and the candidates claim which was 120 words is not the difference between these two values sample mean and the candidates claim which is uh, considered population mean the difference between two is not significant to believe that candidates claim can be rejected with 5% level of significance or with 95% confidence so that is uh, one glimpse of the z-test for single mean. Thank you very much.